The Atelier franchise is a long-running series that for the most part has flown under the radar in the western world with only a small loyal following. However, it has slowly been gaining some extra recognition with the recent release of Atelier Ryza since this specific game has garnered a lot of attention due to a change of marketing tactics and character designs. As of now, Ryza is currently the best selling entry in the Atelier franchise and it has brought in a lot of new fans along the way. With that being said though, the Atelier franchise still remains a niche series as many curious gamers are still on the fence of whether or not they should get into this series. A lot of people still wonder what the hell this franchise is even about. Are the Atelier games about making stuff with alchemy, or is it just a slice of life sort of series revolving around cute anime girls? Well, it's technically both when it comes down to it, and it's probably the best thing about the Atelier series to be honest, let's face it. Well, scratch that, the best thing about Atelier is actually the music and art, but I'll get into that later. For now, I'll cover what the series is actually about and move on from there. As a preface, I'll specifically be talking about the modern era Atelier games, which begins with Atelier Rorona and onward since they are more easily accessible on current gen consoles and PC. Older titles such as the Monokemia or Iris series, I wouldn't recommend to new players due to limited access on older consoles, but I may make a video about the early Atelier series if requested. Alright, so so the modern Atelier series currently consists of three trilogies and three standalone titles, so let's quickly go over the list of games, shall we? The first trilogy is the Arlen series, which consists of Rorona, Tatori, and Meruru. Next is the second trilogy, called the Dusk series, which consists of Aisha, Eska and Logi, and Shelley. Then finally we have the third trilogy, the Mysterious series, which consists of Sophie, Ferris, and Lid and Swell. As for the three standalone titles, we have Atelier Lalua, Atelier Nelki, and Atelier Ryza. Well, I guess Ryza is technically not a standalone title anymore since its direct sequel is being released later this year, and if it all goes well, we may have our fourth trilogy in the works. Okay then, that covers the list of modern Atelier games. Let's move on. First, let's start off by answering one of the most common questions I hear about the Atelier series. This question is, are any of the Atelier games interconnected story-wise, and is it necessary to play in a specific order? Well, the answer to the interconnected story part is both a yes and no. To clarify, every Atelier game has a self-contained story, meaning that there's no specific grand storyline that connects all the games. Every Atelier game sets you off with a different protagonist, placing you in a completely different time and place that has not been affected by the events of the previous entries. The only thing that keeps these games interconnected is the characters themselves, as it's common for characters from a previous entry to reappear in the next entry. Some characters show up for a brief cameo, while others can even join you again on your new journey. These reoccurring characters will sometimes drop a few references from their respective games, but ultimately don't reveal any big story spoilers. So basically, you can start off on any Atelier game that piques your interest without having to worry about the plot. However, there is one thing I'd like to add about the future release of Ryza 2, which is unlike the rest of the Atelier games, Ryza 2 seems to be an actual sequel reusing the same protagonist and cast. So it may not be a good idea to choose that title as your first Atelier game if you haven't played the original Ryza yet. Just a fair warning to any future viewers. Now that I hopefully answered that question, let's move on to the next subject, which is gameplay. The key gameplay aspect that every Atelier game revolves around is alchemy, which lets you craft pretty much any item you can think of by mixing various materials and ingredients in your Atelier shop through a process called synthesis. The stuff you can create can range from weapons, armor, consumable items, and so on. There's also features such as traits that can give unique effects to the items you craft. These can range from simple stat boosts to a variety of 
interesting buffs. The alchemy system in Altelier will vary as its mechanics do get changed often throughout the series so it doesn't get stale. I believe that the alchemy synthesis process is rather simple in the Arlen series while in the Dusk and Mysterious series it is a bit more complex. The synthesis mechanic itself is no measly side feature in the series as it tends to play a very important role in every Atelier game since you need to make use of it to progress the story. You're often given tasks to synthesize a number of items to complete mission assignments in order to trigger new events central to the game's plot. You'll be spending a large amount of time exploring different areas in the world map in order to gather the necessary ingredients for your alchemy. In some of the Atelier titles, specifically the Arlen and Dusk series, you can actually get a game over if you fail to synthesize the required mission items by a certain deadline. This leads to the next mechanic known as the time management system, which tends to intimidate some potential new players from trying out the series. The time management feature in the Atelier games is basically just completing your mission task by a certain deadline, so you have to be careful with how you manage your in-game time since Atelier uses its own clock and calendar system. Doing various tasks such as traveling to different areas in the world map, gathering materials in the wild, and conducting alchemy in your Atelier shop will automatically progress the time in your game's world. This often forces you to learn how to become efficient in multitasking, which means means having to balance out your free time in order to decide on whether or not you should explore new areas or to synthesize new items in your shop. With that being said, I would like to express that the time management system in the Atelier games isn't as scary as it seems. In reality, not all Atelier titles actually have a deadline mechanic, and most of these games let you enjoy your playthrough at a reasonable pace. Though if you do decide to start off with an Atelier game containing the deadline mechanic, don't expect to get everything done with a 100% completion rate in the first playthrough. Now that pretty much covers the signature game mechanics that the Atelier series is known for, so let's talk about the other aspects of Atelier, such as the combat. Atelier uses your standard RPG turn-based combat with the usual mechanics of using regular attacks, skills, and items with the occasional team assist prompts. It's all rather vanilla and it's nothing groundbreaking really, but I'd like to note that your reliance on items rather than skills is very noticeable in this series. A lot of the items that you can synthesize in the Atelier shop can prove very useful and can help you have an easy time dealing with the stronger enemies. Most modern Atelier protagonists are actually pretty frail and weak in terms of physical combat prowess, so they have to rely on the items they synthesize and of course their trusty companions to carry them through the game. So if you want a relatively easy run in your first Atelier playthrough, don't skip out on item crafting as well as making new weapons and armor to equip for those big stat gains. Overall the combat in Atelier is fairly easy to get into and should be enjoyed to the average JRPG fan. Now the last aspect of the Atelier series that I want to talk about is the overall atmosphere that it gives off which is probably what hooks most people into the franchise. Most storylines in the Atelier games are less on the dynamic side of things since it rather takes a more relaxed approach. Heavy themes such as political tension, war, and tragedy are largely toned down from the series since most Atelier games are known for their lighthearted nature. Most stories often start off with the introduction of an amateur alchemist tinkering about in their little alchemy shops, learning on how to improve their skills to either benefit oneself or for others. Like I mentioned earlier, half the time you'll be spending your time exploring the world, fighting monsters, and gathering materials materials, while the other half you're just cooped up in your alchemy shop improving your craft. Even though this doesn't sound like a crazy wild experience, that is honestly just fine since the Atelier series is mostly just meant to be a slice of life sort of experience. It's something for you to play if you just want to cool off from the real world BS we all go through. Just sit back and enjoy the nice looking in-game art while listening to the catchy music. The aesthetics in Atelier is one of its best features. The art style tends to change throughout the games, but every single art style is just top notch. 
Whether it's the CG cutscenes or simply just the menu UI, it's all just visually pleasing. The art is very well complemented by the music as it tends to just mesh well with the atmosphere. The music can be chill when you're exploring a town or forest, but it can also turn epic whenever you get it into a challenging battle. It's all just a nice balance, really. Now that I've gone over on what the Atelier franchise is all about, I guess I should recommend which titles should be a good entry point for newbies, right? I'll keep it short and just list off three games that I think will be a good starting point to the Atelier series. My top recommendation for newcomers getting into the franchise would actually be Atelier Ryza. Since it is the latest entry featuring good quality of life features and a simplistic alchemy system that'll ease new players into the concept of Atelier Alchemy. Ryza also has no deadline feature so you don't have to worry about time management as well. The only thing you have to keep in mind about Ryza is that its combat uses ATB mechanics instead of the traditional turn based system that every other Atelier game has. So everything is real time and fast paced which may not appeal to everyone since you'll end up just button spamming a lot during combat. However you are able to pause in the middle of combat using the quick action feature so that may help with those who aren't comfortable with real time turn based RPGs. Overall Ryza is very beginner friendly and you can't go wrong with choosing this as your first Atelier game. My second recommendation for an Atelier entry point would be Atelier Sophie, which is honestly the most easy going game in the franchise, which also doesn't include a deadline system just like Ryza. In terms of difficulty, the early game may be a bit difficult due to enemy stat inflation, but it will eventually balance out when you start crafting decent equipment. The alchemy system is a little more complex, featuring an interesting Tetris style mechanic that will take some time to get used to for Atelier newbies. The only downside I would really say about Atelier Sophie is that it's definitely a slow burner compared to the other Atelier games. It'll take a while before anything big happens in the story, so keep that in mind if you're gonna go start with this entry. My third and last recommendation for an Atelier entry point would actually be Atelier Eska and Loggy, which actually does contain this spooky deadline system, but don't let that scare you. The time management in this game is more lenient compared to the Arlen series, and it's a good way to ease new players in learning how the time management works in the Atelier franchise. So if you don't mind dealing with the time management aspect of Eska and Loggy, you'll have a fun time with the game, since it has a more fleshed out story with solid combat and alchemy mechanics. One last thing I'll add about this game is that it features two playable protagonists who both come with their own unique perks and stories. So if you like having options, you can't go wrong starting off with this game as your first Atelier entry. Well, I believe that's all I have to say about the modern Atelier series and why you should play it. If you think this franchise might be a good fit for you, then let me be the first to gladly welcome you to the realm of alchemy and barrels. Pick your first Atelier game wisely and enjoy the ride. Cheers, folks!